Look, friends, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm mad. You know why I'm mad? It's because we haven't figured out a solution to the problem of locomotion in VR. I'm using thumbsticks to slide around the virtual realm? What? Thumbsticks? Yes, thumbsticks. Like I'm slipping and sliding after I slathered an oil slick all over my shoes. Okay? It's no good. I don't want it anymore. No thank you. I want to walk. I want to run. I want to crouch. I want to climb. I can't do any of this. So we're going to talk about some of the products that are out there right now that are trying to solve this issue. And uh, we're going to talk about, you know, are they solutions really? The answer might surprise you. So strap in. And let's get into it. First one we're going to talk about is the catwalk seat. And the concept makes a lot of sense. You would think that it would work really well. All you do is you put the shoes on, you slide your feet around on the plastic disc, and it tracks your movement. That thing there on the top, that's a harness. It goes around your waist. And that support bar there that's connected to it, that can swivel around the base plate so that when you rotate, it follows your body. Even though this is called an omnidirectional treadmill, you don't have any moving parts on the base like an actual treadmill would. Now it requires their shoes, very particular kind of shoe because it has a plastic insert on the bottom that, so that you can slide around on the top, which is uh, pretty loud. It makes it, it, makes it pr a pretty loud device. The shoes also have sensors that you attach to the top of them that are used to detect when your feet are moving. Once you're on there and you're strapped in, it does have a little bit of a learning curve to, you know, figure out how to walk in it. It's not like you're walking normally. It's like you're sliding around on this base plate. In order for you to be actually be able to move forward, you kind of have to push your body forward into the harness a little bit to offset your, your feet moving backward. So it's kind of an awkward gait. You can walk or run in this thing, but it's definitely not like the way it feels when you're actually walking normally. But look at the freedom of movement with your arms. You don't have anything that's, you know, getting in the way, which is awesome for VR because, you know, I've seen some other devices that have like a guardrail up so that you can't leave the play space. Those just get in the way of your arms when you're moving around, which you're doing a lot in VR. So... It's very freeing, it's very open. It's also really tiring to use because you're having to put in a lot more effort to maneuver in this thing than you would when you're normally walking. But okay, if that's the only drawback is I have to walk kind of weird to get this thing to work, I, I can get by that, that's, that's fine. And unfortunately, it's not the only drawback for this thing. It's missing two key components that are actually pretty integral to freedom of motion. You can't stray from side to side, and you cannot walk backwards. Well, you can, but it's completely unnatural, and it might as well not be there. I mean, I like the design of this thing. It seems pretty compact and, you know, easy to fit into a bedroom, but it just feels way too unnatural to be a feasible movement solution. If you go on their website, they're $13.99 right now, but you got to keep in mind, if you're getting this shipped to you, you're going to have some big shipping costs. It's upwards of 300 some dollars to get it shipped, depending on where you're at. You got to pick your shoe size. Yes, I'm a size 5. I have extremely small feet. It's actually a medical condition. Do not body shame me. And then you just go to add to cart and you buy it now. Pretty easy. So, yep, yeah, pretty cool device, but it's not exactly where we need it to be. I am, however, very excited to see what Catwalk does in the future with devices that have learned from the shortcomings of this one. So while this one isn't quite exactly what we need, Catwalk might be uh, might have something in the works. We'll have to see about that one. Okay, but in all seriousness, this is actually a pretty neat little device, so let's uh, let's talk about it. This is the Loco S, and it's made by the same company that made the Catwalk C, Cat VR. It consists of a few sensors that you place around your body, a couple at your ankles, and one on your hip, and they track you the same way that they do on the Catwalk C. But instead of moving on the omnidirectional treadmill, you walk or jog in place. To strafe from side to side, you put your foot out and you point it at the ground. 
To move backwards, you put your foot behind you and you point it down. And for cruise control, you put your foot in front of you and point your toe up. Which, unfortunately, isn't really a great movement solution because it doesn't feel like you're naturally walking. So it just translates weirdly into VR. One thing I do like about this, though, it's extremely compact. You can keep these things anywhere. It's not like you have a big omnidirectional treadmill that you have to find space for. You just put these in a drawer and take them out whenever you want to use them. And the ease of access, too. If you look on their website, it's $190. It's on sale. They're normally $230. This is much cheaper than the omnidirectional treadmill from Cat VR. Let's face it, not everybody has $1,600 laying around that they can just drop on a new technology that isn't 100% ready yet. So the fact that this is much cheaper and at least gives you the option to use your feet to move in VR, I think that's pretty cool. In the grand scheme of things, we're still in the early stages of development for this kind of technology. So I think that something like this in conjunction with the omnidirectional treadmill idea, kind of where the future lies within this technology. I have some ideas where I might be able to use these sensors to create my own DIY omnidirectional treadmill. So comment down below if you want to see a video that revolves around that. I don't know when that would come out, but I definitely want to get into something like that soon. So that's the Loco S. Let's move on to the Ecto-1 VR boots. Gaze your eyes upon their delicious design. Are you not blinded by its beauty? Sleek, aerodynamic, not to mention incredibly fashionable. The Ecto-1 are a pair of VR simulation boots that detect where you're walking and have wheels at the bottom of the feet that will move in the opposite direction to counteract your movement. These boots only have the capability to move forward and backward. And they don't support running, you can only walk in these boots. Obviously these are some glaring design limitations that would not be ideal for us consumers. However, there are some interesting applications for this tech at the enterprise level. During the product reveal, they showed two training examples. The first took place in an oil rig, and the second one was in an underground mine. I kind of see this as more of a proof of concept than anything. As the product's design goes through iterations and gets better over time, maybe this will find its way into the consumer market and we'll be able to use it uh, in, in our space. But for now, this is more geared towards Fortune 500 companies that want to utilize this for training purposes. So is it cool? Yeah, it's pretty cool. They probably make you feel like you have anchors strapped to your feet, but hey, it'll get better over time. Kind of been the theme of this entire video, right? It's finally time for the last device on our list, the Virtuix Omni-1. And I know what you're probably thinking. Bugsy, this looks like the same omnidirectional treadmill you showed at the beginning of this video. What gives? In the eyes of the casual gamer, these two devices may seem the same, but I can assure you, they are different. And I have high hopes for this one. Now the Virtuix Omni-1 is produced by a different company, but it seems to be taking notes from the shortcomings of the Catwalk C. The Virtuix Omni-1 utilizes a vest with the bar that supports your weight resting on your upper back. Having the support at the top of your body as opposed to center mass will allow for a more natural walking feel because you're not having to press your body into the waistband in order to move forward. It also has a guided support bar that's curved along your back, so you can stand or crouch, which opens up more locomotion opportunities. Overall, the design just makes it seem as though you're going to be able to move around much more fluidly and more naturally in this device. It supports forwards and backwards motion, for sure. I would definitely like to see strafing. I want to see some side-to-side -side movement. It feels like it's something that shouldn't be that hard to do, but so far, very few devices have that opportunity. In the video, it said that they're going to arrive in 2021. If you go on their website, it still shows that pre-orders haven't started yet for the device. And you'll have to put in your email so you get notified when those pre-orders do start. It also says on their website that it's going to include a standalone VR headset. I couldn't find any information on this, so I don't know exactly what it's going to come with, if they're going to design their own VR headset, or if they're going to use something that's already on the market. Now let's talk about their pricing model. Based on what I could find, the Omni-1 is probably going to cost around $2,000. But it seems like they also want to integrate some sort of subscription model, almost like a Peloton. They want this to be more than just a gaming device. 
They want it to be used for fitness as well, which if you're like me and you keep telling yourself to go to the gym and you never do, and then you get winded after 20 seconds of Beat Saber and don't know why, you'll not only be able to justify it as a cool gaming device, but you can also say it's a worthy investment in your health. And your health, my friends, is priceless. I think it goes without saying that I am incredibly grateful that you decided to watch my video today. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Come back anytime. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Helps me out with the algorithm. Watch my other two videos that I've got up already. Got some great information about headsets that are on the market, as well as top five highly anticipated games that are coming out in 2022 for the Quest and other VR headsets. So thank you so much. Have a great day. Bugsy out!